Good evening, everybody. Monday morning quarterback, episode 25. Uh, <clears throat> got out here in my shop getting quarter midgets ready to load up for Pocono. We head there uh, Wednesday for the last national quarter midget race of the year. Um, came back from uh, Texas last week, was out there uh, supposedly for some now 600 races and everything rained out. Ended up catching part of the um, elite non-wing series at Heart of Texas uh, until that rained out <laughs> and then uh, headed over to Tulsa to Port City Raceway and caught some customers there and uh, saw some good racing at Port City so really cool that that track is back open um, just a really great micro track reminds me a lot of uh, Delta Speedway where I grew up racing in California Marcus I brought the rain with me well it's not raining in Indiana right now so um, I think you're wrong. Didn't rain in Tulsa either. <laughs> um, so we'll get back out there to Texas. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be this fall um, or in the springtime once we have our trailer and we can um, bring that out there. But definitely want to get back out to Texas and see some more of our 305 customers as well as uh, our micro customers. So a lot of good, good racing going on in the great state of Texas. Um, so I didn't pick a topic for tonight. We've covered a lot of in-depth stuff the last three weeks with two weeks of torsion bars and uh, last week going over bump rubbers. So I figured um, those of you that are tuned in would probably have questions regarding those two topics and we can cover that tonight as well as any other um, questions you have about uh, your race program um, uh, or, or a car you're helping on or anything like that. So. Um, Next week, we will jump back into uh, bump rubbers in a little more uh, in depth. Uh, I want to show how we rate bump rubbers and dyno them on our shock dynos. Um, just going to take two people, so I'm going to have to get uh, my wife or Trevor or somebody to video for me while I demonstrate how we dyno them. And uh, that'll give you a really good idea of um, what these bump rubbers look like as they're getting compressed. Um, see the distortion if you're running it by itself or if you're running it in a cup or if you're running our new progressive kit um, so that'll be real interesting to show you guys that and we can also put some pressure decals in there and show you how those um, uh, how loading those uh, changes the color and, and how all that works so uh, so anybody that's tuned in um, feel free to ask questions uh, based on our conversations the last three weeks, uh, whether it be uh, torsion bars or bump rubbers, or any other question you have. Uh, a common question I got this week after the bump rubber that I wanted to address with you, and I, I should have mentioned it last week, but when measuring your bump rubber gap, um, should you do that with the driver in the car or out? You definitely want to do it with the driver in the car. And again, the bump rubber gap is the distance between the body and the top of the bump rubber. So essentially how much travel before you engage the bump rubber. That's your bump gap, and you want to measure it with the driver in the car. Our uh, bump rubber kits, um, or our bump rubber cup and standard rubber, they'll come with a, a sheet that gives you our recommendation for where you should start with that bump rubber gap for your given application, um, and then how we adjust that as the track slicks off or slows down, etc. Uh, another thing you'll want to keep an eye on with bump rubber gap is as you change um, your left side tire and take stagger out throughout the night, uh, that will uh, also change your bump gap as that corner height is changing. And then obviously as you pour fuel in the car throughout the night, uh, your bump gap will change. You wanna keep a close eye on that because that gap can close up, you know, quarter, three eighths of an inch um, with some chassis adjustments and uh, creep up on you, won't even know. Uh, let me read Daniel's question here. Uh, Daniel, what type of race car do you have? Judging by your picture, it looks like a micro. And are we referring to wing or non-wing? So if you can answer that for me, I will do my best to answer your question. We got a lot of the Texas racing community tuned in tonight. We got Marcus Thomas, Russ Reed, John Randall. Russ, you'll be happy to know Trevor just left. He helped me get all those four quarter midgets finished up for Pocono. They're all ready to go in the trailer. And uh, so Trevor just left. I asked if he wanted a special guest appearance, but he opted out. 
So Daniel, let me know what type of uh, chassis you have and if you're referring to wing or non-wing, and uh, I'll answer your question regarding that loose condition. Any of the other 40 or so of you uh, tuned in, feel free to ask questions. John Randall has given you a compliment, Daniel. Good runner fridge. So a lucky seven. Uh, I, I saw, I've seen a few of those over the years, all non-wing. Um, if you're having a loose condition, I would try evening up your bar split. If, you, um, if, if you're running positive split, I would try evening up your bar split. Um, obviously, bringing the right rear wheel in can help tighten the car up. If it's a, if it's a very drastic uh, loose condition, a lot of times shocks aren't going to fix that, so we'll have to get it a little closer with the chassis and then tune on the shock. So keep in mind that shocks are definitely a fine tuning device. If the set, base setup isn't right, we're not going to be able to dial it in with shocks. Shocks will certainly allow us to get that last little bit um, and, and fine tune everything, but if it's really far off. So I would look at wheel spacing, uh, potentially increasing the bar rate on the left rear, maybe running left rear weight. Um, once you do those things and you get get a little better handle on it um, non-wing we can start adding some more rebound to the right rear uh, which will help with side bite and grip and then you also might want to try the bump rubber kit we talked about in last week's episode that is really uh, working well on the micro guys on the right rear uh, allowing a lot of side bite and we've used it on a variety of chassis we've got some Sawyer guys using it uh, some D1 guys using them and uh, Stollard guys, and everybody is really liking them uh, non-wing. Uh, let see if I missed another question. Uh, AJ, uh, our modified shock packages are going really well. Uh, I'm not extremely familiar with a Victory Circle chassis, um, but excuse my slight bit of ignorance. Uh, I don't do a ton of the dirt modified stuff. Jordan at our shop does a lot of the dirt modified stuff. And then we work really closely with Bobby Harris out in Iowa. Um, so we have some great uh, dirt mod shock packages. And I have a set maybe of our test shocks left. So if you're interested in trying or, or maybe potentially switching to CSI, shoot me a private, me private message or give me a call. And uh, be more than happy to talk with you further about our shock packages for the dirt mods. Um, I would try taking a little bit of stagger out, Daniel, um, based on what you're telling me, and then um, definitely try the bump rubber kit. That'll help uh, help give you some side bite. Uh, John, we are running the bump rubbers on these quarter midgets. We're getting ready to go to Pocono for a parking lot race, and, uh, and we've found the bump rubbers to work exceptionally well in the parking lot stuff. Allows us to get a softer spring rate, to get across the bumps and all the imperfections um, on a parking lot, but then we get into the bump rubber and uh, get that added wheel load and grip. So uh, definitely all the cars in the background are on bump stops headed to um, Pocono. Ryan, great question. Um, you should take the travel marker off when running the bump rubber. Um, it just kind of gets in the way, takes up some of your gap. Um, I would definitely take um, the travel indicator or rubber O-ring off the shaft when installing the bump kit. Um, as far as what load you should be seeing, to be totally honest, we're still um, really collecting data on that. So what we've really used those bump kits for is, um, or the pressure decals for is, one, are we loading the bump rubber or are we not? That's the, that's the most important thing. And two, as we close the gap up, how much further are we loading the bump rubber? Once we feel like we're getting um, what we want out of it, we're getting more side bite, the car feels good, it's balanced, um, then we're going to really take note of what that load is and try to repeat that load the next time we're out on the track. So, uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you, hey, you need to hit 480 pounds of load. Uh, we don't exactly know that yet. Um, I think it's going to be different for everyone's application based on chassis type, driver weight, and exactly what they're doing. Um, we would love for you to share um, either 
text or Facebook message or email me pictures of your pressure decal so we can continue to collect more data. Anytime I'm personally at the track, I'm putting them on cars just so I can learn myself. And um, by this time next year, we'll have a really good idea of across all the platforms we work with, what loads are working the best. Um, but right now we don't exactly have that perfect yet. Uh, scroll up here. Nice shop, thank you. Talk about how and where to put the pressure decal. Good question. Um, so between the shock body and your first washer, um, or if you're running a packer, you can put it between the shock body and the packer. Um, you want to do it that way. So um, it, there's a, it, it's pushing on two flat surfaces, or the two flattest surfaces possible. You don't want to put it between two shock washers or between a bump rubber and a, uh, a shock washer, a bump rubber washer. You want to do it between the body and then the next thing it's going to see, um, whether it's a shock washer or a packer. There you have two flat surfaces pushing on each other. That's going to give you the most accurate reading. Okay, good question, AJ. So, um, Adjustments from heavy to slick with nitrogen. So as we add nitrogen to the shocks, they're going to react quicker uh, with more nitrogen, slower with less nitrogen. So when the tracks are heavy or rough, we run more nitrogen. So the shock's going to react quicker. Um, we'll get a little more gas pressure increase through displacement. Car will get in and out of the holes quicker. It'll unhook the car slightly and just give an overall nicer platform and a better balance. As the track slicks off, we take some of that gas pressure out so the shock reacts a little bit slower um, and we're going to get a little more grip because we don't have as much rising gas rate. <clears throat> as far as the bump rubbers go, um, non-wing usually we're able to get enough gap where we can just open the gap up early in the night when the track's heavy and we're not loading the bump rubber as hard. Um, obviously, usually when the track's got a lot of moisture, we don't need that added side bite. Um, and then as it slicks off, we can clip packers in there, get into the bump rubber harder and get that side bite and grip we need. Um, that's how I prefer to do it. That way you're not constantly taking the rod end off the shock and fiddle, fiddling with that throughout the night. You have enough other stuff to do with fueling your car and making adjustments, stacking tear-offs on your helmet, etc. Um, so you should be able to get enough gap to just leave it on all night. We're not going to really be engaging the bump rubber a whole lot. When the track's heavy, as it slicks off, we'll close that gap up and start loading the bump rubber. Lots of good questions. Will you have bump rubber kits for sale at Pocono? Uh, yes, I'll throw some in the trailer. Um, I usually don't pack a ton of stuff um, just because it seems like at the national races everybody kind of has what they need. But, John, I will throw some in there for you. Uh, if you need anything else, be sure to uh, shoot me a message, and I'll, I'll be sure to pack it for you. Appreciate Ryan going to share that with us. Uh, anybody else that's tuned in have questions regarding uh, the torsion bars we were talking about uh, two weeks ago and then uh, the bump rubbers um, from last week. So we're kind of just doing a recap. Next week um, we're going to dig into bump rubbers a little farther. Uh, we're going to run them across our dyno and show you um, how they distort, how we rate them, and if we're running a conventional kit, why we're running it in a uh, cup. Uh, instead of just on a plate. Um, sometimes on a micro, we'll run it on a plate because we don't want the rate as stiff, but on a sprint car, we'd always run it in a cup. For wingless, do you uh, loosen left rear and tie right rear? So I'm assuming you mean loosen by taking rebound out of the left rear, adding rebound to the right rear. Uh, yes, Gary, we do do that. However, we are very conscious of how much rebound we take out of the left rear shock. If you take too much rebound out of the left rear with the goal of it um, coming up quicker and loading the right rear harder, you're going to be uh, disappointed because you're going to take left rear drive out of the car. Um, so we're very careful. We will take a little bit of rebound out to allow the car to kind of do what it's wanting to do and transition to the right rear and get the right rear grip. And we're trying to get more even drive um, non-wing, but we don't take a ton out because it will take left rear drive out. And then your left rear is going to come up, you're going to lose left rear drive, and you're really not going to stick the right rear much harder either. Um, is 
Zach, can you explain the difference between a high and low speed tie down and a shock and when each is necessary? Uh, Zach, please tell me what type of racing you're doing and I can explain that uh, based on your application because it does vary a little bit depending on what type of racing you're doing. Uh, John, we, we typically, you'll see the biggest benefit from the bump rubbers when the track slicks off. So um, oftentimes, as I mentioned earlier, we try to keep the bump rubbers on all night with a bigger gap, not loading them as hard when the track's heavy, and that way when it blows off really quick, we can just clip some packers in there and quickly get the setting we need to utilize the bump rubber in a slick track. Um, on the midgets and sprint cars, we haven't found it really hurting anything when the track's heavy, but you don't see the gain that you see um, when the track slicks off. So seeing the biggest improvement in handling and grip when the track slicks off for sure. Who will, um, waiting for Zach to Tell me what type of car he's racing. Don, that's a, a great point. Um, and that is, as I was sitting in the airport, uh, I was coming up with um, as many topics as I could think of for this Monday morning quarterback segment. And that's what I'm definitely going to do is we will do one showing the torsion bar being dynoed, how we read the sheet, what we look for when the bar is going bad. So... Um, anybody else that has anything they want to see covered on this topic, uh, we would be more than happy to um, listen to your suggestions because sooner or later I will run out of ideas. So um, I'm doing this for you guys, so let me know what you want to hear and we will do our best to accommodate. Uh, Zach 305, let me see what your question was here again. Sorry, I'm trying to find your question. Okay, so wing, th wing 305 and 360 racing, I would focus mainly on low speed, zero, half, one inch per second. You would be shocked at how little you're going to see a velocity above five inches per second in the rebound direction on a wing sprint car. Um, it'll certainly move fast in the compression direction, but in rebound, it does not move very fast. The most sensitive adjustment on a wing sprint car is gonna be your clamp force. So your rebound closed uh, zero inch per second number um, to one inch and then three inch. Definitely the most important is gonna be that zero to one inch on a wing sprint car. Um, the 10 inch, I don't know that you're ever gonna see it uh, in the rebound direction. So we don't focus on that number a whole lot. Obviously we've built our pistons around the curve we wanna see, um, which ours are, are fairly digressive. We don't build a whole lot of high speed rebound into a left rear shock. Um, we would run a little more high speed rebound uh, like on the front shocks than we would the left rear, uh, but definitely focus on uh, that low speed number. Uh, Steven, how to read dyno sheets. Uh, great, that's another one um, where we're going to go a little more into depth on how to read dyno sheets. So we're going to try not to freak out all of our customers, but here in the near future, we're going to be <coughs> uh, adding another shock dyno, um, a CTW dyno, which those are the folks that were the design engineers for Roarig. Uh, we've been working with them on our Roarig dynos and they are absolutely awesome as far as customer service and technical support. Um, so we're gonna be getting one of their machines in the near future and slowly start introducing that. But the dyno sheets look a little different and read a little different. And I've spent a lot of time trying to educate our customers on how to read their dyno sheet and what numbers to look at. And we're gonna have to show them that uh, uh, everything's the same. It's just gonna be presented in a little different manner on our dyno sheets. Um, we're going to slowly introduce it. I think we're going to start with the quarter midget shocks, use that CTW machine on the quarter midget shocks, and then eventually all of our machines will be on that CTW software um, just because that's where the future's at. Those are the guys developing um, as hard as we work to stay on the cutting edge of shocks. These guys are working that hard on data acquisition and cutting edge stuff. Um, and they're a small shop like us, great guys to work with, and so that's what we'll be doing moving forward. Bobby Z, thanks for tuning in. Bobby Z is a longtime supporter of CSI, one of the original Team CSI members, 
And uh, I don't know how old Bobby is, but he's still out there getting it done in the south. And we love seeing him win races. Correct, AJ. As the track slicks off, we would go less gap. Uh, number one, the car's not going to travel as far as the track slows down, um, and we want to engage the bump rubber more. So yes, we would tighten the gap up or go stiffer bump rubber um, as the track slowed down or slicked off. Brent loves Bobby too, and we miss Brent as well. Uh, Miles, so that's a great question. And one of the things we struggle with on a micro is getting enough bump rubber gap. So Miles's question is, when running a bump rubber on the left rear, it bounces off of it. So basically what's happening there is you're building rate in the bump rubber quicker than the car can handle it and it pushes itself off. The car doesn't have enough mechanical leverage to keep it on there. Um, or in his instance, he says when he adds more rebound to try to keep it on there, he loses right rear side bite. So a couple things can be done there. First would be addressing the bump rubber issue. Try to get more gap, which is difficult to do, or we can maybe go with a softer bump rubber if possible. Um, so it doesn't build rate as quick and doesn't bounce off of it. Um, I've experimented with um, putting a bump rubber in the lathe and back cutting the back side of it to hollow it out. That, um, as you take some material out of it there, um, it builds rate a lot slower and it's a lot softer. So if you're running a conventional bump rubber, we can look at that. Um, if you want to shoot me a message, Miles, with exactly what bump rubber you're running and what your gap is and all that, I will try to help you uh, solve that because that is a, a pain in the rear. The other thing we can do there is add right rear rebound. Um, so if you're tying the left rear down to, and it feels better on the bump rubber but you're losing side bite, we can add rebound to the right rear. PJ, another long time CSI supporter, car owner of the Tulsa Shootout winning outlaw car last year. How's it going, PJ? Anybody else have any questions? And I promise next week we will dig back into a topic further explaining bump rubbers. Um, also, for those of you tuned in while waiting for another question, um, if you're coming to PRI and you want to come to our shock seminar, we've got six spots left on Friday and eight or nine on Sunday. So um, be sure to sign up on our website or give me a call, and uh, we don't want you to miss out on that. Tim Driscoll, how often... Um, you rebuild your shocks. 20-25 races um, is when we recommend. I, I explain to my customers, it's a piston moving up and down in a cylinder with oil just like your engine. You can only do that so many times before the oil needs replaced, seals, bushings, everything needs replaced. Um, PJ, good question. I'm going to make a field trip up to Clawson shop probably. They're like the closest midget guys to us. And um, we're going to do a Monday morning quarterback with how to set your um, secondary helper spring because we get that question a lot. So we want that documented in a video and be easy to refer people to that. Uh, Michael, we got a lot of guys running bump rubbers uh, on the right rear of non-wing uh, 1200s or lightning sprints. Um, and then up in Washington, we've got some guys running them on the left rear of the wing car. So yeah, we definitely got some 1200 guys. Uh, Bobby Z... Um, we haven't, we've had a few guys run the bump rubber left rear and right rear on a wing micro, um, varied results. If we can get the gaps right, the results are fantastic. As we were talking about earlier, sometimes it's hard to get the gaps right uh, on these micros. So the stroke is short on the shocks. We don't have a lot of shaft to work with. Our new progressive kit's fantastic, but it's on the taller side, um, if we can get the gaps right, they work really, really good, but that's something we fight. I'm not positive on your PMP with a six inch gas shock like you have, how much um, gap we have. If you wanna shoot me a message with how much shaft is sticking out of your shock, I can let you know what we can make work there. I miss somebody else. Shane, how to dyno shocks from us. Um, what do you mean by that? 
do you have a shock dyno and you're curious what parameters to dyno the shock at? Um, please elaborate on your question, Shane. I, I'd love to answer it for you. Anybody else have a question? Wait for Shane to chime back in with uh, his dyno question so I can get that answer before we sign off. It's crazy. It's like pitch black out here now, and I feel like two weeks ago it was light out till like 10 o'clock. So fall's coming, which means winter's coming. The only fun thing about winter here is we get to race slot cars in my shop. So we look forward to that in the winter. We do go-karts outside in the summer, slot cars in the winter. We can never get enough racing in. Shane, please elaborate on your question about the shock dyno. Um, how much to have you shine dyno shocks for me? Uh, Shane, if it's a CSI shock, we dyno them for free. So we dyno customer shocks uh, for free, whether you bought them from us or not. If we built the shock, we dyno it for free for the life of the shock. If it's another brand of shock, we charge $10 for a non-adjustable and $15 for an adjustable. Um, so CSI shock, though, we dyno them for free. Whether we're at the racetrack or you ship them to us or come in and visit us at the shop. John, I didn't get enough chicken in Texas. I got bushes once, and then at the Hard Rock, I got some stale, overcooked, burnt chicken. So that's a reason to come back to Texas, I guess. Uh, we don't run the bump rubbers on the left rear of non-wing cars. Uh, if you're traveling in the left rear direction hard enough to load a bump rubber, something's wrong with the setup. So we definitely, um, and I don't see, uh, Ty, you might be referring to like stacking it up enough to keep it from slamming back down. As progressive as our kit is, it's intended to load the tire um, and not keep it from bottoming out or, or keeping the left rear up. Um, so we've never really fooled with it, um, but it works very, very well uh, on the right rear. If you want to run a bump on the left rear to keep it from bottoming out, I wouldn't run the progressive kit. I would run a more linear kit so it builds rate right quick enough and then it'll keep it off the left rear. Thank you, everybody, for, for participating with so many great questions. Uh, I look forward to next week and showing you some bump rubbers on the shock dyno. We'll get uh, an assistant to hold the camera so I can explain all that for you. I uh, hope you all have a fantastic week. Uh, everybody that's traveling to races, safe travels, and uh, let us know how it goes. Take care, everybody. Good night.